Yeah, what do you think this recent attack was aimed at? Well, it's obvious the recent attack was aimed at the Syrian government. Uh, it was aimed to destabilize it uh, further. And at the same time, it was a very clear response to those who are arguing, like myself and others, that there should be a political settlement, that this ugly stalemate should not be allowed to continue uh, uh, any longer, and that the saner elements within the opposition should sit down and see what can be sorted out even at this late, late stage. Because if this doesn't happen, the war will expand, as we are seeing, into Lebanon. And then anything's possible. Effectively, the uh, Syrian rebel forces trying to topple the government uh, have not had open public support, which they wanted, in terms of the NATO uh, strike bombers or the United States coming to back them. And they are effectively trying to maintain their position during this ugly transitional period to see how they can keep the situation destabilized. But it is not in the interest of the Syrian people, in my opinion. Uh, you mentioned Lebanon there. I mean, how worrying a, a development is it that the Free Syrian Army has apparently set an ultimatum for Hezbollah, threatening to shell its positions in Lebanon? Well, if they can carry that out, which is an open question, because their bark is often worse than their bite. But were they to do that, they would be dealing with a totally different entity than they deal with in Syria, because Hezbollah is a popular mass organization with support of a very sizable section of the Lebanese uh, population. And what that could do could be, could be to reopen the wounds of previous uh, civil wars in Lebanon, which no one wants, neither Hezbollah nor its opponents in that country. Uh, if, if this happened, I mean, might Western countries use this conflict as a means of targeting Hezbollah in Lebanon even? Well, they've never stopped doing that. Don't forget that the last attempt to crush Hezbollah was made by the Israelis who invaded Lebanon, bombed Beirut, tried to crush Hezbollah, but suffered reverses themselves. So I think they've learned from that, that it is not easy to wipe out a movement with popular support and popular bases. They've, they've learned that lesson the hard way. And were they to try it again, the results would not be too dissimilar. And as for finding a solution, uh, the Syrian opposition coalition earlier said it's uh, ready for talks, but only if President Assad has no role in the transitional government. So where is the way forward, in your opinion? Well, in my opinion, you know, this is a critical moment for Syria. Just look at the ordinary people in this country suffering now for, you know, dozens of months. It's an appalling condition in which to bring up children or to live everyday lives. And both sides have to make compromises. And if the opposition is prepared to talk to the Ba'ath leadership without Assad, then in my opinion, so be it. It's not a defeat for anyone. Pat. It's just as a sign that it's time to recognize reality. Assad should uh, leave, resign, uh, and there sh a talk should open up. I don't think that should be seen as a defeat. It would be a victory for the entire Syrian people were that to happen, and it would reassure many, many minorities in the country. Okay, we'll leave it there. Tariq Ali, historian and Middle East expert, thank you for joining us here on RT today. Thank you.